Grizzlies fans, it's time for another Grizz game day update. We had a few days off, but we are back in action tonight at the FedEx Forum. The Grizzlies will take on the Brooklyn Nets 7 p.m. tip. This is the first time we're seeing Brooklyn this year. So joining me to break this one down is Adam Armbrecht. And I'm excited for this one because this is two teams that are a little bit below 500. And I think there's a little bit of like juggling on both ends. The Nets just have this new coach. The Grizzlies have a lot of new players. The chemistry is starting to build. And so I think this is actually going to be a really fun game to watch. Are you as, as excited as I am? Well, listen, I'm excited because the Brooklyn Nets have a chance maybe to win a basketball game. And that's been their their biggest issue involving from Jock Vaughn and letting him go and having Kevin Ollie as the interim head coach is can they go out and win a basketball game uh, so far, the returns are negative on that. So <laughs> coming up against a team that's missing, what, 80% of their starters from when they began this season might be the recipe for this team to get a win finally. Okay, well, let's hope not. The, well, sure, okay. Nets-, your side, sure. <laughs> the Nets are on a four-game losing streak right now. The Grizzlies are coming off of a loss to the Clippers where it really came down to the last like, minute and a half, two minutes. Um, but let's get to the brass tax. For the Brooklyn Nets, the only person who's like questionable today is Ben Simmons for the Grizzlies. Everyone who has been out is still out. Everyone who could be active is active. So when you think of the Jarens, the Vinces, those guys are in Ja, Marcus Des, those guys are out. Um, let's talk about how you win a basketball game. And that is scoring both of these two, both of these two teams are in the bottom 10 in points per game. But I'm looking at the roster of the Nets, Adam, and it seems like, you know, Bridges is averaging over 20 points a game. Cam Thomas, over 20 points a game. Cam Johnson, 13. Nick Claxton, a double-double. Where does the problem lay when you have this talent? Like, why is this team not producing? Yeah, you talk about Ben Simmons being questionable here. Knee soreness for him. So, and he hasn't played on back-to-backs this season. He left after the third quarter of the last game for them. But but he represents a part of the issue. So, you know, Mikhail Bridges, even Cam Thomas, two players that have been really playing really well offensively, have been struggling of late. Shot from beyond the arc for this team overall has been down. And what it comes down to is it, it's just how they try to construct the offense or or how they fail to construct the offense. It's the reason why Jock Vaughn was fired. So when you get into these offensive sets and you have Ben Simmons, when healthy and on the court, non-shooter, Nicholas Claxton, non-shooter, you go to the bench, Dayron Sharp back from injury the last few games, non-shooter. All of a sudden, you you run into this issue of how do you create floor spacing? How do you create opportunities? Now, there's been some open looks that just haven't fallen for them, but, but their offense bogs down consistently. And then you get into Mikhail Bridges, who is not an elite ball handler, not going to take a guy one-on-one off the dribble. They don't have a lot of those weapons either outside of, say, Cam Thomas. So individual talent wise, you look at the roster and as you say, you go, Hey, there's a lot of names here. There's a lot of stats that, that add up to what should be winning basketball. But unfortunately it, it fails to come together for them on a consistent basis where they can go ahead and start to get leads, protect leads, and then lean into what was supposed to be their identity, a defensive minded team that can really drag you down. But when you're playing bucket for bucket or even trailing, it, it, it's just next to impossible for this team to sustain offensive basketball. The Grizzlies kind of DNA has been three and D they Mm -hmm. set up a lot of threes, a lot of threes, and then they play good defense. Uh, But when I was looking at it, the nets are eighth in the league in three point attempts. Who's taken them. Yeah. It's Mikhail bridges. It's cam Johnson off the bench. It's a bit of cam Thomas taking more, but then what the nets did this off season, they went and took a one year flyer on Lottie Walker. He's shooting volume when he comes in. That's almost exclusively his role. Dorian Finney-Smith, he's been coming off an injury, like Cam Johnson as well, so their minutes have looked lower of late, but they're also, th- those are three-point shooter in Cam Johnson in theory and D. Dorian Finney-Smith, clear three and D player. So they actually spread it out. Like, it is volume across the board here from everybody not named Ben Simmons or Nick Claxton, and, and which can be a good thing. They rank in volume. They they were, prior to the last five, six, seven games, really good from deep. And now they started to taper off there a little bit as they bogged down. But it's everybody. I mean, that that was the, the, the DNA of this team coming into the season was Ben Simmons healthy, transition basketball, facilitating, and a bunch of people spacing the floor. They just have not had that in a large sample size given Ben Simmons' health. Okay, when you look at the Grizzlies roster now, um... – Jacob Gilliard has been released from the Grizzlies. That was a point guard. 
Derek Rose has played has played, you know, like small minutes, a limited minutes in games. He's healthy tonight. Um, John Morant is obviously out. So Jordan Goodwin started in that point guard spot uh, in that last game against the Clippers. You have Vince Williams Jr. who is coming off a game where he only scored nine points and he's been one of the Grizzlies offensive like prides as of late, at, you know, 20 or more points per game. Um, Matt Hurt just got signed from the G League to a 10 day today. And then the one remaining starter that you talked about, Jaron Jackson Jr. is coming off a 29 point game. Do you think it's harder for this team to come in and maybe like not have as much knowledge about some of these guys, you know, like they haven't played a Vince Williams Jr. They haven't played Gigi Jackson or are they coming in so desperate for a win that it doesn't matter who is on the other side of the court? Well, no, it matters. You know, Gigi Jackson having, having a great season, obviously that's been phenomenal for the Grizzlies and, and probably one of those kind of bright spots in what has been such an injury plague season for them. On the one hand, you could say, yeah, you don't know these guys, unknown commodities, no scouting reports. And the other side is, well, there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason why these guys are on 10-day contracts. It's not to knock them, but it's because they're they're going to bounce around. They're back into the roster guys. Goodwin was a part of the Phoenix trade with the Brooklyn Nets for Royce O'Neal, and he wasn't even a thought to retain on this roster for a team that desperately needs players and is trying to win games. So talent is supposed to win out in the NBA that that is, you know, maybe more so than any other professional sport. When you have the elite superstars, you win basketball games. So you should be able to look over there and almost be licking your chops if you're the Brooklyn Nets. But, and I'm, I, I to be clear, the Grizzlies just played the Clippers tough, right? So there's no and reason. The Bucks and like, they're coming off some big wins, right? So there's no reason why the Nets should be confident because the Nets so far can get absolutely dumpstered by 50 by the Boston Celtics. They can let go of their coach. They can have a soft landing spot in Toronto and lose by 28, right? Like they are not playing good basketball. So I would almost reverse it and say, if you're the Grizzlies, you're playing very loose basketball right now. There's no pressure to this season. These young guys are these guys that are coming 10 days. They're trying to showcase themselves. So what you end up sometimes getting is like a team that feels like they've been struggling in the nets, trying to get themselves on track and maybe playing tight. Whereas the Grizzlies come in and say, Hey, you know, this is, this is free basketball for us essentially. So you can come in and play loose and be aggressive and, and potentially continue a bad trend for the nets and give them their fifth straight loss. You know, everything in the stat categories tells you that the Grizzlies are a bad overall shooting team. They're a bad three point shooting team and they're a bad rebounding team. And the rebounds are specifically are like an area where the Nets should be able to control this game in this tempo. But but again, the Nets just came off a loss where they they won almost you know seven out of ten statistical categories and still lost by double digits. So they are an enigma, and it gives me no confidence game to game with this team. All right, I'm gonna end with this then because it's interesting to win all those stats and still lose a game. So here is the last question: If the Grizzlies want to win this game, well, they do. The Grizzlies would like to win this game, Adam. What can they specifically take advantage of on this Nets team in order to do so? I think if you can, you know, I want to say if you could find a way to win the rebounding battle, that's one way to do it. But but something that's been creeping up for them, especially in this transition time now where they're redefining some roles and rotations and maybe playing oddly familiar ones. Uh, turnovers. They, they've been careless at times with the basketball. They had, I think, 16 in their last loss. Again, a team like this that has a lot of B, B-plus level guys, but no superstars, you need to play clean basketball, knock down your open looks, and then find a way to play sound defense. They do not hold people off. They do not prevent it. And ironically, with no Ben Simmons, too, these last two games, their transition game has disappeared. And that, is, that has been pretty critical to them. They don't play well in half court. They struggle. So if you're Memphis, I would say play sound offensive basketball, Try to go with the higher percentage shots and the you know guaranteed looks and get yourself back on defense. Because if you put the Brooklyn Nets in half court sets, you will watch the shot clock dwindle. You will watch them get lost in kind of who's supposed to have it for the last look. And you'll see a lot of bad shots go up for them. So I would say try to slow this game down if you're Memphis, force the Nets into the half court and then go for the high percentage. You don't need three pointers all the time if you're Memphis because the Nets are not putting up a lot of points right now. All right. Easy as that. I mean, the Nets aren't putting up a lot of points. The Grizzlies are 30th in points per game. So slow your roll there. Like. 90s basketball, baby. Let's get back to the 80s. Let's talk about 92-90. I love it. Adam, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you so very much. Anytime.